in a seated position. So find your way into any seat that's comfortable for you. If you like to use a blanket, you have a yoga block that you'd like to use, you can bring that over. If you have a bolster that you like to sit on, I would encourage you to have those things handy for the start and the finish of the class. And just begin to slow the breath, counting the length of that full inhalation. Slow, gentle release with your exhalation. Two more breaths here, softening the shoulders away from the ears. Let's take a few extra moments to connect to the breath here. Follow the path of the breath. Notice that point where it starts at the tips of the nostrils. All the way down. Diaphragmatic breath, allowing the abdomen to expand as you inhale. Soften and maybe even contract a bit toward the spine at the base of the exhalation. Not worrying too much about that contraction, but really follow the path of that breath. Notice if there are any spots where it sticks or catches. And see if you can use the breath, much like a fine sandpaper, to smooth those rough spots, those areas where the breath may stick or catch. With your next several breaths, we'll focus on allowing some continuity in the breath. Inhale, rolling into the exhale. The exhale back to the inhale with little or no pause in between, thinking of that figure eight or infinity symbol, allowing the breath to follow this path. Two more breaths here. Smooth, even, quiet breath. Infinite movement of prana, life force energy, in and out. In and out. Start to notice that there are areas where the breath sticks or catches. Those resurface, smooth them out again. We'll begin to get some gentle movement into the body. Trying to clear away any distractions, whether they're mental distractions, distractions of sound or sense, anything that takes your awareness away from your mat with the movement. With your next exhalation, allow yourself to lean forward just a little bit. And I encourage you to, if you have the hands on the lap, just allow the hands to rest there. We don't want to pull ourselves forward. Or maybe bring the palms up or allow the fingertips to rest on the ground. Slowly shift over toward the left side, trying to keep both hands connected, keeping both sit bones connected to the ground. Lean back a little bit. This is where it's a challenge to keep those sit bones at the ground. The tendency is to roll way back. You want to stay connected, just leaning back from the waist. And then allow yourself to slowly find your way over toward your right. Notice. Any distracting thoughts will start to move a little more quickly now. Not too, too fast, but not holding quite as long in each spot. Gentle movement in the body. Begin to visualize a storage space in the mind. Your inhalations begin to gather up those distractions. The exhalations place them into that storage space. So let's see if we can bring the hands to heart center, allowing the movement to freely come from the joints and the muscles in the torso and the hips. 
You may have some movement through the knees a little bit. Maybe you even choose to move the shoulders a little bit. One more round of breath in this direction. And then we'll pause in stillness the next time we're forward. Allow the hands to release, sinking into a little deeper forward fold. Opening up through the hips. One more breath right here. And with your next inhalation, we'll slowly come up. Let's switch the cross of the legs if you have the legs crossed. If you have one leg in, one leg out, switch sides. Bringing the hands back to heart center. Exhale, sink forward. Going to the left. Pause for a breath. Leaning back. Shifting over towards your right and forward. Two more times. Finding your stability, maintaining connection to the sit bones, and let's speed it up a little bit if that's available to you. If you were going pretty fast, maybe try slowing it down. Two more rounds here. Inhaling in one direction, exhaling in the other. Last one right here. This time we'll come toward the back. Allow the hands to come to the ground behind you. Top. So the fists or palms at the ground or the blanket or the bolster or anything you might be sitting on. Pressing the chest toward the sky. Navel center draws toward the spine. Two more breaths. Last one here. Inhale as you come up. And as you exhale, let's extend those legs out in front of us. Starting to get some flowing movement forward and back. So you can have the feet side by side or a little gap in between. Inhale, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, sink into a little forward fold. As you inhale, slowly walk up, fingertips come to the sky. As you exhale, hands come behind you, pressing the chest toward the sky. Inhale as you come back up to sit. Exhale, hinge at the hips, slow forward fold. Continuing those deep diaphragmatic breaths, nice and slow, easy fingertips to the sky. As you sit up, exhale, hands to the ground, pressing the chest toward the sky. Inhale as you come back up to your seated position, fingertips to the sky, exhale, pull forward. Inhale, slowly find your way up, fingertips to the sky, exhale, hands at the ground, chest presses toward the sky. One more round here, inhale up, exhale forward. Inhale up, exhale back. Inhale, come up to your seat. We are going to find our way to our tabletop position. So being a tabletop does not work for you. Um, for this particular round of postures, we'll be working with some hip openers. Maybe you actually rest on the side of the body. So you'll see what we're doing, um, and I can demonstrate a little bit with those modifications as well. So let's find our way into our tabletop, whether you sweep the legs to the side or you roll over crossed ankles. We'll get some knee circles from our tabletop. So let's begin with your right foot, bringing it out to the side, rolling it back, coming kind of in toward the chest, and then out and back. So if you are choosing to come into a supine position, you would be able to do this lying down. You're getting the same opening through that hip if being in tabletop doesn't work. Let's take about four more rotations in this direction. Three more. Last one here. Knee in toward the chest, press away, bring the foot forward, down and away. So just reverse the direction of those circles. Three more rounds of breath here. Engage the core a bit to help maintain stability in the low back, to support the low back. Two more rotations. 
last one right here. Pause in stillness with the knees side by side. And we'll switch sides. If you chose to do this from that um, recline position, come on over to the other side so you can get into the other leg. We'll bring the knee out, press back in to the chest and then out. Slow circles, try and keep those hips tracking toward the ground. So we're not shifting up and down. We want to keep the hips pretty neutral, pretty level as you come through this movement. Let's go three more here. Engaging the core. Last one right here. Pausing in stillness with the knee in toward the chest. Press back, bring the knee out, in and down. Reversing direction. Four more rotations. Remembering to move with control, with muscle rather than momentum. Last one right here. Knees come side by side. Let's shift gently from side to side. Getting some movement through the waist. Two more breaths here. Last one right here. So you'll notice this isn't really our traditional or typical slow flow class for those of you that have taken it. We're just getting some movement into the body. Let's bring the forearms down to the ground. You can stay on the palms if you prefer. We'll bring that leg back so the toes point toward the sky. Allow that right leg to come across the body, tap on the right. The toes come up and across, tap left. Up and across, tap right. So we're still working with that hip joint, but we're allowing ourselves to engage the glute muscles a little bit more. Strengthening through the lower body. Three more rounds of breath here. Two more. Last one here. And reset your table. You can stay on forearms if you prefer to come up into a traditional table to get a little stretch side to side. I encourage you to do that. And again, as we move through these postures, you can continue in the tabletop posture or you can choose that forearm on the tabletop if you prefer. So wherever you've decided to go, let's allow the left toes to come back. You point up toward the sky, draw the leg across the body, toes tap right, legs across the body, toes tap left. Five more times. Slow and easy with control rather than momentum. Last one right here. And reset your forearm table. Coming back up to the traditional tabletop. Just allow yourself to shift gently from side to side. And as you do this, start to turn the gaze over alternating shoulders. Getting some movement into that neck. Last one right here. Pause and stillness right here. Let's allow ourselves to walk the hands forward or the knees back a little bit so you're in a little more of a um, modified plank. Take a moment to think of your intention or dedication here. I know we normally put that at the very beginning of the practice, but sometimes clearing out some of the stuff that's stored in the body and clear out some of the junk that's stored in the brain, which can allow us to form a more, an intention that's better for us. And as you repeat that intention to yourself, inhale, shifting forward into that modified plank, exhale, sink back into a little kind of 
modified variation on your child's pose. Arms extended in front of you. Let's bend at the elbows so you can get that sway in the back, that cow-like sway, lifting up, rounding the back, cat-like, navel center toward the spine as you sink sit bones toward the heels. Three more times here. If this does not work in your body, you can come to a seated cat and cow posture. Two more times here. Last one right here. Let's take a little break for the wrists and the knees. Shifting forward, allow yourself to roll down onto the abdomen. Let's draw the fingertips out in front of us. Lifting the hands and the feet, pulling fingers and toes in opposite directions. As you exhale, walk hands and feet to the right. They can rest at the ground if you'd like. Inhale through center. Exhale, walk them to your left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Three more times. Again, if this is not available to you, if resting on your abdomen doesn't work, you can stay in your seated position and walk the hands and the arms to opposite sides of the body. Last one here. Pausing in stillness. Let's bring the hands back. Forearms at the ground so that we can come into a space pose. So if you're in a seated position, see if you can scoot your chair or your seat over toward a wall so that you can bring the forearms to the wall. Allowing yourself to get this gentle back bend. So the more the shoulder or the elbows are underneath the shoulders, the deeper your back bend, the higher the lift is. If you walk the hands forward, you'll see that I sink a little closer to my mat and a little closer to my mat. The shoulders are still elevated, so there's still a back bend. So that is one way to soften. If you don't like that, resting in that fashion doesn't work for you, and you want to soften the bend, you can bring the hands back so that the elbows are back closer to the waist. That's going to lower your bend as well. So find what works for you, and once again, we'll get into the neck. Allow yourself to turn so your chin comes toward the right shoulder. Sweep the chin across the chest, stretching the back of the neck and the upper portion of the back. Chin and gaze go over your left shoulder. Now again, if any of these things don't work for you, don't do them. Gently sweeping side to side. Two more. Coming over to that left side one last time. Pause in stillness with that neck in a neutral position. From here, we'll find our crocodile. So again, if resting on your abdomen doesn't work, you can sit near a wall. <clears throat> so if we're on our abdomen, we're going to get some movement through the knees and the lower portion of the body. If resting on the abdomen doesn't work, you can simply chill out with the forearms at the wall, resting the forehead or the chin at the wall, or you could come back to a tabletop and do one leg at a time. Let's bring the feet up and then allow those knees to float down, or I'm sorry, toes to float down. Inhale up, toes to the sky, exhale lower, Two more times here. Last one here. And now we'll all alternate. Right foot toward the sky. Press the foot toward the sky, allowing the knee to lift off of the ground a bit. And then release. Foot comes down. Bend at the knee. Pressing that foot straight up toward the sky and release. Bend at the knee, 
foot comes up toward the sky. Hand release. Left side. Lift. And lower. Now again, if this doesn't work in your back, either a tiny movement or bypass and just continue getting some movement into the knees and the ankles. Last one on the left. Allow those toes to rest the ground. Let's bring the hands back underneath. Um, the fingertips are almost lined up with the shoulders, so the base of the hands are farther back. As you inhale, we'll slowly peel up. Little baby cobra and then lower back down. Three more times here. Inhale, slowly come up. Exhale, slowly lower down. Three more. Now, if you're in a seated position, continue, you can continue if you're at the ground. If you're in a seated position, you can still do this. It's just that seated cow, drawing the shoulders back and then coming to control. With our next inhalation, we press up into our tabletop. Pausing in stillness here, we're going to really work with opening up through the hips, getting some movement through the knees. This also can help to relieve any tension that may have built in the low back, so allow the sit bones to sink toward the heels. And then just come back to that neutral space. Sit bones sink toward the heels, and then find your way back to a more neutral space. I'll shift so you can see a little better what I'm doing. You can continue or you can pause, whatever is best for you. Sinking back and coming forward. Sinking back and coming forward. It, I'm going to introduce something that will increase intensity a bit. If you're choosing to do this, um, you want to bring the knees closer together. If you don't have anything under the knees to pad the knees and you tend to have tension or tightness or discomfort in the knees, I would encourage you to add a blanket. So we'll shift the sit bones toward the heels, come forward, lifting the toes off of the ground, and then dip down. Press up. As you come back into that little child's pose, the toes touch the ground. As you shift forward, we dip. Up and back, getting into some strengthening. Up and down. Press up, release back. Press forward and dip down. Up and back. Forward, dip down. Three more. Or not, remember your or not. Give yourself an opportunity to settle in child's pose if this does not work for you. Last one here. Sinking back into that child's pose. One more breath here. With your next inhalation, we'll find our way back up into our tabletop. Bring your right foot in between the hands into that nice low lunge. And we'll get some more movement. So I encourage you to tuck the left toes. If that doesn't work in your body, you can leave the top of the foot of the ground. We'll sink back, straightening the front leg a bit with the exhalation into that fold. Inhale as you walk forward into the lunge. Exhale as you sink back. Inhale as you come forward. You can keep the sole of that right foot at the ground if that's what works best for you. That introduces a stretch over the top of the ankle or bring the toes to the sky. Yogi's choice. Two more. Last one right here. Shifting forward. So allow that foot to wiggle out toward the right side of the mat. You can leave the palms at the ground. You can roll onto the pinky toe edge of the foot if that seems appropriate. 
You can bring the forearms toward the ground, either with the sole of the foot at the ground or with the pinky toe at the ground. You can bring the forearms down to a blanket or a block or a book. Two more breaths here. Last one right here. As we inhale, find your way back up. Sweep that leg straight back. Give it a little shake, a little movement, a little wiggle, a little shift, whatever you may need. And we are going to allow that foot to drop to the mat behind the left foot, coming into a modified side plank. If you prefer the traditional side plank with both legs extended, you're welcome to do that. Fingertips find their way to the sky. The right fingertips. I wouldn't advise trying to bring the left fingertips up. That would probably make you fall down. <laughs> Let's get a little movement into that arm. Draw the fingertips toward the wall in front of you. Roll the fingertips toward the ground. Toward the foot and toward the sky. In front of the head, toward the ground. To foot, to the sky. Two more times like this. Last one right here. Let's bring that hand up toward the sky and reverse the direction of those circles toward the foot, the ground, the head, and the sky. Three more times. Engage through the core. Just because we have that bottom knee down doesn't mean that we want to lose the alignment in this practice. So if you have practiced the traditional side plank, you know it takes a lot of core strength to hold this. Keep from dumping into the shoulder. With your next, the next time that hand comes out in front, we'll pause here and then reset your table. So allow ourselves to switch sides here. So we're going to bring that left foot forward in between the hands. You can allow the right leg to wiggle back a bit or not. Right toes can be tucked. I don't know if you can kind of see my foot <laughs> or not. We'll get that same little movement. So as we exhale, we sink back, kind of folding over that extended left leg as we sink the sit bone toward the right heel. You don't really want to sit on the foot. You can, but um, that tends to take us out of the, this pose a little bit. Inhale as you come forward into your little lunge. Exhale as you press back. And again, that foot can stay at the ground or the toes can come to the sky. Let's move a little more quickly now. Inhale into your little lunge. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Three more times here. Two more. Last one right here. Sinking back. Coming forward once again, both hands come to the ground on the inside of that left foot, allowing the left foot to walk toward the left side of the mat. You can leave the palms at the ground. You can bring the forearms to the ground or to a blanket or to a block. You can roll to the pinky toe edge of the foot or not, yogi's choice. Take three more breaths wherever you landed. Last full breath right here. With your next inhalation. Slowly find your way back up. Allow that leg to sweep back. Cross those toes back. Shake that leg out. And then when you are ready, we'll allow that foot 
to find the ground behind that right knee. So I'm going to switch sides just so I don't have to turn away from you. It's the same thing on the other side. We want to find our way into our little side plank. So whether it's the modified side plank with the knee down, which is what I would probably encourage unless you're used to practicing full side plank, or you can come into the full side plank, both legs up, yoga's choice. We want to engage through the core, the hips are stacked. The top hand, in your case, will be your left hand, fingertips drawing toward the sky. And let's get those nice big circles. Fingertips pull toward your head, toward the ground, toward the foot, toward the sky. Again, this is not an essential part of the, pop, the practice. If holding in stillness is where you need to be, if leaving the hand at the hip or the low back is where you need to be, go ahead and give yourself permission to do that. Engaging through that core. Two more breaths here. Last one like this. Fingertips to the sky. Draw the hand toward the heel the ground, the wall in front of you, the sky. Reversing that direction. Five more times. Again, continuing to move with control rather than momentum. Two more, nice and slow. Last one here. The last, next time you find those fingertips out in front of you, we'll pause, we'll reset our table. Pause in stillness for a moment. And then bring the feet up so we can come into a standing posture for a few moments. So find your way into your forward fold. Maybe the fingertips or the palms are at the ground. Maybe the hands are at the feet, the shins, the thighs, maybe they're on blocks or you have a chair in front of you that you're resting your hands on. Give yourself permission to utilize any props that will make the practice more accessible to you. With your next inhalation, we'll come into our half lift. Nice flat back, kind of look like an ironing board. As you exhale, sink forward. Inhale, slowly press up. Exhale into your fold. Three more times. Two more. Last one here. Feet firmly plant into the ground, a little softness behind the knees as you peel up. The fingertips find the sky. Press the fingertips toward the sky, lean to your right. You can interlace the fingers if you prefer. We want to keep the hips stacked over the knees, the knees over the ankles, knees are soft. So we're not like rolling to one side. Keep that nice alignment so you get that big stretch up the left side of your body. Inhale up, and as you exhale, Lean toward your left, stretching your right side. One more breath here. Inhale up. Moving a little more quickly. Full exhalation as you come to the right. Inhalation up. Exhalation left. Inhalation up. Exhale right, inhale center, exhale left, inhale center. One more time in each direction, right, center, left, and center. Hands at the heart, sink forward into your fold. Keeping the palms together, zip that air up in front of you. Maybe you come into a little back bend, maybe not. Again, we can do this even if we're in a chair or if we remain seated. Exhale, fold, nice and slow with control. If we move too quickly, we get into ligaments, tendons, and joints, risking injury there, but we're also very likely to become dizzy. So try and continue pulling those fingertips away from you. 
three more times here. Really just hinging from the hips until you bend through the waist. Hinging at the hips as you come forward, nice flat back. Two more flat back as you come up, zipping up that air in front of you. Little bend at the waist into that back bend or not. Exhale, flat back, unzip the air. Last one here. Exhale, into that forward fold once again. Pausing in stillness with the fingertips to the ground, the feet, the shins. And we want to wiggle the feet toward opposite sides of the mat. Inhale into your half lift. And as you exhale, fold over that right leg. So we're getting a nice stretch through the left side of the body, a little bit of a twist here. One more breath here. Allow the body to settle in to find the posture. Inhale as you walk across center. Exhale, fold over the left side. Soften your shoulders. Two more breaths here. We are going to find some movement here once again, continuing to flow. Walk the hands over toward the right. Fingertips come up toward the sky, over to the side, pull over that left leg. Walk across, up and over, using those muscles in the sides of the body. Exhale, pull, walking across. Two more or not. Remember, nice and slow and easy helps to prevent you from becoming dizzy. Allows you to access those muscles in the core of the body the legs through the back. Last one here. Find your way back down to center. Pause in stillness for a breath, two, maybe even three. Now notice if that's working in your body. If it's not, please don't do that. You can always either just walk across from side to side, or you can hold in stillness, or you can come to a seat, to a child's pose, anything that you may need. If it is working for you, if that round worked for you, let's try reversing the direction. Hands come toward your left foot. One more slow exhalation. And as you inhale, engage, pulling those fingertips up toward the sky, coming over to fold over that right leg. Walk the hands across. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Walking the hands across, inhaling as you come up. If you prefer the opposite breath, that's fine. I generally find it's easier to inhale as we have the opening of lifting the body and exhale with that compression as we hold. But you do what works for you. Last one right here. And continue a couple more if you really enjoy it. Exhale, folding over that left leg for an extra breath or two. If you are taking that break, if you're giving yourself an opportunity to settle in here. One more breath right here. Inhale, bring the hands back to center. So if you're continuing to move, find your way back to that fingertips between the feet. Let's press up to our half lift. Exhale here. Inhale, come back up to stand. Interlace the fingers. The palms come out in front and allow the arms to come up overhead. Maybe they're out in front, maybe they're right overhead. Stretching through the arms. One more breath here. With your next exhalation, the arms can float down alongside the body. Feet come side by side. Find your mountain pose. Feet are firmly planted at the ground, about hips width distance apart. Shoulders are soft, fingertips draw toward the ground. Navel center draws toward the spine. Crown of the head grows toward the sky. We'll work a little bit more with balance. So allow yourself to shift the weight into that right foot. I know some of you are probably like, what in the world that was hard enough to balance with all that moving? <laughs> we'll just work a little bit, still with the hips working with some balance postures. Come up onto those left toes. 
We'll bring the left foot out to the side and then back to center. Lifting up, step out, and then back to center. If this up and out does not work for you, you can keep the foot at the ground or closer to the ground as you move. If otherwise, up and out, up and out, up and out, up and in. One more here. Come out. Find your gaze point with that foot out to the side. So remember, our gaze point is just a fixed space out in front of us. Maybe it's a, maybe there's a wall there or a speck on a wall or there's a picture that has an, a spot that you can gaze at. Maybe the floor, maybe the ceiling. Maybe you're actually looking at a focal point out in space. From here, let's start to lift that foot up. That left foot comes up. Balancing on the right leg. Maybe those toes start to point away from us. Arms can come out into a T if you'd like. Two more breaths here. Last one here. Release. Allow the feet to come side by side. You can shake out that standing leg or just lift and lower the heel. Get any movement that you need in that right leg. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side if it works in your body. If not, you can repeat on the other side or take a little break or come into some other balancing posture that works better for you. You have a favorite. So once we're ready, let's allow the weight to shift into the left foot, into the left leg. Come up onto those right toes. Bring the foot out and in. Out and in. Maybe this is where you stay. Maybe you have the lift and lower, lift and lower, lift and lower, lift and lower. Three more. Two more. Remember, or not, still an option. Last one here. Coming out here to the side. Lift that foot up, find that gaze point. If you lost your gaze point, allow yourself to bring the toe down to reset your wobbling. Maybe those right toes come out to the side in that kind of number seven or L or triangular shape. Maybe the arms come out to the side, making this little falling star shape. Two more breaths here, or not. Navel center draws toward the spine, pulling the low abdomen in, that really helps to stabilize. Last breath. Exhale, release. Feet come side by side. Walk in place, lift and lower alternating heels, whatever you may need. We have a little more stretch for the hamstrings with some little pyramid poses, and then it's about time to find our way back down to the ground to close out the practice with some supine postures um, and a rest. So we will bring that weight back into the, let's come to the left foot. <laughs> we'll bring the right leg back just a little bit. Hinge at the hips, sinking forward. Now, yogi's choice. Once you're in your fold, you can leave your hands at the hips or the thighs. You can bring the hands to the heart. You can allow the hands to rest at the shin, the thigh, the foot, the ground, or maybe you bring the hands to the low back, introducing a little bit of a shoulder rinse. Whatever seems most appropriate in your body at this moment. Two more breaths here. Last one right here. And with your next inhalation, slowly find your way back up. Once you're standing nice and tall and stable, we'll bring the feet side by side. Pause for just a moment. And with your next exhalation, shift sides. Bringing your left foot back. The right foot stays in front. 
This is the only reason I switch sides because I know you can't really see my back foot from the same. And then you decide if you have the hands in front, maybe you try hands behind. Maybe you like having the hands at the hips or the thighs. Sink forward over that extended right leg. And then decide where you want the hands to land. Just be mindful that you're staying away from joints. You don't want to press into the knee or the ankle joint. Really, we don't want to press into the hip joint either. You can have the hands behind you or not. Just depends what seems beneficial in your body. Two more breaths here. Wherever you landed. Last one here. And with your next inhalation, slowly. Nice and easy. Let's bring the feet side by side. Inhale, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, split that air as you come into your forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands come down to plant, bending at the knees. Step back into your tabletop. From tabletop, we'll find our way to our supine position. So you want to come onto the ground. I will turn the mat again. Then we don't have to turn the back to you. You can still see what's going on if you're using the visual references. So from here, we want to rest at the ground. Soles of the feet at the ground. Knees pointing toward the sky. Let's bring the arms out to the sides. And allow your right ankle to cross over your left leg. So you're making this little number four shape. Now the reason I have the arms out to the side is so that we can engage through the glute or through the um, obliques a little bit. If that doesn't work in your body, you can have the arms alongside the body. You can rest the hands on the abdomen, cactus the arms, place the hands behind the neck or the head. It's entirely up to you, Yogi's choice. But if arms and a T is available to you, allow those arms to just come right out of that shoulder socket. Begin to sway that left foot side to side. So you're getting movement through the sides of the hips, through the sides of the waist. One more breath like this. Now you can continue like this, or maybe you lift onto the toes on the right side. That's going to cause you to engage more through the core of the body. If you still want a little more challenge, this is an opportunity to do that. If you're ready for a, the wind down, foot stays at the ground. And then if you want to come up into a bigger challenge, we can lift that foot off of the ground and use the obliques to rock side to side. Last one here, each direction, whichever variation you chose, pause in stillness. That foot comes down to the ground. Big inhalation. With your next exhale, come into your supine twist. So we're going to keep everything at the ground. The arms can go wherever they want to go. Maybe you shift toward the left hip a little bit and roll. So we're going to keep the shoulders tracking toward the ground. Rinsing through the midsection of the body, the hips kind of stack on top of each other. That top foot might rest at the ground in front of the thigh. Maybe the toes are at the ground. Maybe it works better in your body if you uncross and allow the knees to stack, the ankles to stack. Maybe you prefer to have the foot back here or the foot behind you. Yogi's choice. Your gaze can come over either shoulder. If this doesn't work, you can continue to simply sway the knees from side to side. You're still getting these stretches. We're just not holding it in that situation. Rinsing away the stress, the tension, the discomfort that we allow to be stored in the midsection of the body. Two more breaths here. Last one right here.
with your next inhalation, we'll slowly unwind, rolling back onto your back, coming to a nice neutral space. Bring that right knee in toward the chest, catching behind the thigh or wrapping the hands around the shin. Just be aware that you're staying away from that knee joint. That left leg will press away from the heel at the ground, toes pointing away, keep toes toward the sky, heel off of the ground, either option. Maybe the forehead comes up toward the knee, maybe not. Yogi's choice. Two more breaths here. Last one right here. We'll bring that foot in. Allow the right foot to find the ground. Switching sides. If you need to reset, if you're still shifted a bit to one side, give yourself an, the opportunity to do that. We want to have the spine pretty nice and straight for this portion where we're engaging into the core of it. So this time your left ankle will come over the right knee. We'll begin by simply swaying side to side. Again, you can have the arms wherever they need to be. If working through the obliques is causing some tension or strain in the low back, you can also place the hands behind the low back or you can opt out of that. Arms alongside the body can sometimes help to alleviate that as well. Let's get three more breaths here. Two more. Last one like this. And then come up onto the toes if that's available to you or not. Two more times. So the significance of a strong core is that that's where a lot of our stabilizers are. From that center, either foot comes to the ground or bring that leg up, continuing that swaying motion. Core is a big part of what keeps us stable, helps to keep us from losing our balance, falling, having injuries. One more time in each direction, wherever you chose to let the foot land, pause and stillness at the center. That right foot finds the ground. Inhale here as you exhale, allow that left foot to find the ground in front of the right thigh, maybe, you prefer to uncross, stacking the knees. Shoulders continue to track toward the ground. Your gaze can come to either shoulder. Gaze can be at the sky. Eyes can be open or closed. Yogi's choice. Let's just take three more breaths here. Soften any amount more. Three more breaths. If this is absolutely not working in your body, please remember that you always have permission to adjust. Allow yourself to unwind, allow yourself to adjust the positioning of the body, and just continue to sway the knees. One more breath here. With your next inhalation, we'll slowly roll onto our backs. This time the left knee comes in toward the chest, catching behind the knee or wrapping the hands around the shin. Left leg extends away, heel at the ground, toes to the sky, toes away from you, foot off of the ground, yogi's choice. Maybe the forehead comes toward the knee, maybe not. Three more breaths wherever you are. Shoulders are soft away from the ears. Last full breath here. With your next inhalation, allow the head to float down to the ground. That right foot finds the ground. Left foot finds the ground. If there's any last movement, posture, or pose that you feel you would benefit from or that you need to feel your practice is complete, I encourage you to take it now.
Otherwise, begin to prepare yourself for rest. So maybe you rest um, in the traditional yoga resting pose, Shavasana, legs extended long, arms alongside the body. Maybe you prefer what is sometimes referred to as half Shavasana, soles of feet at the ground, knees pointing toward the sky. The feet might even walk a little bit toward the opposite sides of the mat so the knees can drop toward each other. That can sometimes help to open up through the low back alleviating some low back pressure or tension, or you can place a blanket underneath the thighs or the knees with the legs extended if that's, if the low back tends to hurt when you lie on your back. Another option is what we call sideline Shavasana. So just as it sounds, you're just going to come into this rest on your side. Knees can be stacked or legs extended. One hand in front of you for stability or that top arm along that top edge of the body. Maybe you choose to rest on your abdomen in crocodile pose, resting on your abdomen, forearms, stack, chins, forehead, or one side of your head, resting on those stack bones. So again, yogi's choice. Find the space that works for you if you need to replace socks cover a blanket place a blanket under your head your knees cover with a jacket a sweater anything that you need to find a space where you can settle in please do so you want to be able to release to soften to allow the benefits of this practice to settle in if you're experiencing discomfort that's not likely to be accessible so allow yourself to find the space where you are completely comfortable. Maybe today that means coming to a seat, resting your back against a wall or coming to sit in a chair. This is your practice. Allow it to work for you. Take those last shifts, wiggles, or movements. Bring your awareness back to the breath. This time breathing as if air came in through the top of your head and left through the tips of the fingers, gathering up tension, discomfort, or stale energy along the way between the top of the head and the tips of the fingers, all the way down the head and the neck, the arms and the fingers. And with your next inhalation, bring that awareness right to the center of the chest, energetic heart center, exhaling out through the tips of the fingers. Clearing even more. Releasing. From the top of the head, down the head, the neck, shoulders, arms, hands, fingers, and through the chest and upper. With your next inhalation, bring that awareness right to the middle of your abdomen. And exhale as if you could send that air out through the tips of the toes. Again, clearing away tension, stale energy, or stuck gunk that you find along the way. The next time you inhale, we'll bring awareness right to the center of the sacrum, pelvic center, space between the hips, and out through the tips of the toes. And with your next couple of breaths, breathing in through the crown of the head and straight out through the tips of the toes. One more time here. And with your next inhalation, bring awareness slow and easy to the tips of the toes and allow that awareness to hover there. Mind releasing and resting as you soften and settle each space in the body. 
the right toes, your right foot, right ankle, right leg from the ankle to the knee, your right knee and all of the spaces that surround the knee, your right leg from the knee to the hip, right hip, your left toes, left foot, left ankle, left leg from the ankle to the knee, left knee and spaces that surround the knee, left leg from the knee to the hip, and the left hip, the glutes on the right side of the body, glutes on the left side of the body, low back, middle of your back, upper back, sides of the ribs, sides of the waist, center of your abdomen and low abdomen, the entire abdomen soft all the way to the base of the rib cage, rolling that release up over the chest all the way to the collarbone. Soften and settle the right fingers, right hand, right wrist, right arm from your wrist to your elbow, right elbow and the spaces that surround your elbow, right arm from the elbow to the shoulder, and your right shoulder, left fingers, left hand, left wrist. Left arm from the wrist to the elbow. Left elbow and spaces that surround the elbow. Left arm from the elbow to the shoulder. And your left shoulder. The back of your neck. Back of your head. Sides of your head. Sides of your neck. Front of your neck and throat chin, muscles around the mouth, cheeks, jaw, spaces surrounding the ears, temples, muscles around the eyes, including the eyebrows, sides of your nose, bridge of the nose, Space between the brows, center of your forehead, your entire forehead, the crown of your head. Allow yourself to sink, settling toward the ground or any other supports that are behind you. Bring your awareness to the tips of the nostrils, following a path from the tips of the nostrils to the crown of the head and back. And as you breathe, begin, if it makes sense to you, to repeat the term, so hum. Inhaling on so, exhale hum. So hum. So, hum, your pace, your breath.
Inhale, ah. Exhale, am. I am. I am. I am. Once again, I am. Allow awareness to come to the fingers and toes. Getting to get some gentle movement into the body, wiggling fingers and toes. Notice the support coming from the spaces behind you, the warmth between your body and those places where you're resting against your mat, the wall, the chair, the props. Maybe begin to move the wrists and the ankles. We wish to bring the soles of the feet to the ground, allowing the knees to sway side to side. Maybe get some movement into the arms, bringing the fingers toward the shoulders and then the arms back down, moving into those elbows a little bit once again. You may wish to begin rocking the head from side to side. Do any of these things, all of them, none of them, whatever works for you. And when you are ready, know that there is absolutely no rush. Gently find your way to one side of the body. Whichever side seems natural to you. Pausing in stillness for a breath or two, maybe three or four. Then gently press up to your comfortable seated position, whatever that may be, if you're not already there. Allow the fingertips to float to the ground. Inhale, bringing the hands up overhead, palms come together, exhale, hands come down the center line of the body. You can even do this if you're still lying down on your back. We'll repeat once again, inhaling so, hum. Two more times, inhale so, exhale hum. One more time, inhale, so. Exhale, hum. Meaning of that is I am that. It's a connection to you, the universal energy, the world, divine energy. Pausing in stillness, recall the intention that you set at the beginning of the practice, allow the palms to come up. On the lap, or allow the fingertips to rest on the ground, palms facing up. With your next inhalation, bring that intention to you, right to heart center. As you exhale, press the palms in front of you, sweeping the arms to the side, clearing your space of obstacles, clearing your path of obstacles. Inhale, bring the intention to you. Exhale, clear your path. Last one right here. Inhale, hands to heart center. Exhale, clear your path. Let's bring those hands to heart center one more time. I'll close the practice with the call of OM. You're welcome to join me or you can rest in stillness and simply breathe. If you prefer, you can bring the hands to the third, four thumbs to the third eye center. That's kind of where the OM resides. Yogi's choice. Inhale in preparation. to the heart if you chose to move them. Thank you so much for sharing this practice with me today, for offering your time and your energy. May you be happy, healthy, and secure. Have inner peace, freedom, and love. We seal our practice with a gentle forward fold, honoring ourselves and each other. Om Shanti Om. Have a wonderful day. Happy Easter.